Cleaning out the freezer, I found four bags of leftover cranberries from the holidays, and now it's time to decide what to do with them. Hi guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but this is future me stopping in just to let you know this video didn't go quite as planned. So stick around to see what we had to do to find a way to try to make this work. Part of our January reset is always going through what's in the freezer, coming up with some creative ways to use it, and knowing what we need to prep for next year. So I found these bags of cranberries in the back of the freezer that we had bought when they went on sale at the holidays and I was trying to decide what I wanted to do with them. Now we've done steamed uh, cranberries in our steam juicer and we've made cranberry juice, we've made cranberry powder, we've made cranberry sauce. So the one thing that I know we don't have enough of because I have plenty of everything else is dried cranberries which I use a lot in my baking. So today we're going to take these four bags of cranberries and turn them into what some people know as craisins. So because these come from the store, they're not something I grew myself, I'm going to cut these bags open, I'm going to put them in my strainer, and I'm going to give them a wash. Um, when you don't grow it yourself, you don't know what it's been exposed to, how it was grown. Um, a lot of companies may tell you everything is organic or all natural. I'm still going to give them a wash. So let me get these bags opened, let me get these washed off, and then I'll be right back. Now that I have these all washed, we're going to put them into our small dehydrator. Um, this is a five tray dehydrator, so I'm going to take the trays off and all I'm going to do with these is get them spread out on the trays. And some of them are very tiny and fall through. <laughs> so I'm going to put those in the middle, but I'm going to fill the trays with these and then move the dehydrator over to get it started. So let me get these trays filled and we'll see how full this machine gets with these. Because I'm having a problem with some of these smaller cranberries falling through, I ended up breaking out something that we made, which is this small piece of screen that fits right into the tray. So this is just a simple piece of window screen. It prevents things from falling through the bottom tray. So I'm going to be putting this one on the bottom so any smaller cranberries that fall through will land here or as the cranberries dry if they fall through it's going to collect them on the bottom tray. Now that I have all the trays loaded, I'm just going to carefully set them in. I've made sure each tray is lined up with the little stands so that it keeps space between the trays, a lot of good airflow. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on and I'm going to move this over to our counter. For this particular dehydrator, I am using the grape setting for this. So I'm going to have it at 158 degrees for about 16 hours. So let's go get this plugged in and running. We let the cranberries run in the dehydrator for the 16 hours. Now, we had taken these out of the freezer and a lot of recommendations are for blueberries or cranberries. If you've frozen them first, they should dry fine. <clears throat> what we found was that um, they're basically, they're still solid. Uh, a few of them are starting to dry, but they're not drying very well. So we went in, I'm going to put this top one back on, <clears throat> and we popped a few of them. And the ones that we popped are drying out much better than the ones that we didn't. So we're going to go through, I'm going to take this top back off. <clears throat> We're going to go through and just with a toothpick, I'm going to take and I'm going to pop these and I'm going to rip a little bit of a uh, tear 
into these and you can see they, they pop real easy and I'm going to put the dehydrator back on for probably another eight hours and see how they come out. So I'll finish this up, get these all popped and come back and see how they did. Well, the cranberries are finally done. What I ended up doing was I consolidated the trays down to four instead of five as they dried. I also lowered the temperature down to 130 degrees, ran it instead of just an additional eight, ran it for another total of about 24 hours. Now the cranberries are dried and dehydrated. Some of them are small like you would expect, like a raisin, and some of them are more of a, a dried, more rounded shape. So now that we have these all dried out, it's time to get them off the trays and into a jar for storage. I've consolidated the cranberries down onto one tray, but before I get these into this jar, I wanted just to share with you a little note. Now, if you're dehydrating something like cranberries, the trays are going to get covered with little splotches of juice and it's inevitable it's going to happen even the base of the machine ended up covered with cranberry juice the nice thing about trays like this is they'll clean up really well into some warm soapy water i may end up using a brush to get into some of the nooks and crannies but they will come nice and clean for next time so i'm not too worried about that so I'm going to get the rest of these into this jar and we'll come back, see how much I have and talk about what went well and what didn't. Getting the last of these poured in and I did empty the trays on top of a flexible cutting board to make it easy to collect all that instead of it being all over the counter. Now we ended up with about five and a half cups of cranberries from those four bags. And once you have them dehydrated and you know that they're all nice and dry, you can close this storm on your pantry shelf. Um, I'm gonna take these and probably store them right into my refrigerator because I'm gonna be using these for making some scones and some other recipes that I've got coming up over the next week. And um, what went well and what didn't. So, I have discovered with cranberries um, and with a lot of other things that we've dehydrated. Just because somebody says this is the way to do it and it's gonna work, if it doesn't, don't panic. Um, with these, the recommendation was 158, 160 degrees for 16 hours, shouldn't have any problems if they've been in the freezer, and that for me just didn't work. So we did the same thing that I would normally do with grapes. We basically put holes or tore them. Um, if I were to do this again, I would probably just cut them in half, save myself the headache of that process right from the get-go. Um, we ended up doing them a little bit longer. I think that was because they were still too solid and they just, the skins wouldn't pop. But um, lowering the temperature helped with that and extending that process out after we had broken the skins on it. And in the end, we ended up with something that we're still able to use. We're going to be able to use these in our baking, which was the original plan anyway. Um, so just to anybody out there who's new at this kind of stuff, don't worry if something doesn't come out right, right away. Sometimes you have to work with what you're using for your machine. It may be different than what somebody else online is telling you, uh, but don't be afraid to give something like this a try, to extend the shelf life of things that you have, to get them out of the freezer so you don't have to worry about if you lose power, and to just kind of expand on the skills that you have. So thank you for coming along with me on this journey of what does and doesn't work when you're dehydrating cranberries. And if you liked our video, give us a thumbs up, share our video with your friends because that really does help us out a lot. And remember, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. And until next time, take care.